Good evening, everyone. How are we? I just saw Ruth T saying in the chat to someone else, you'll always be Ruthie to me, which to me sounds like you'll always be Ruthie to me. Oh, anyway, enough of that. Um, hi, good evening. How are we all doing? Let me know where you're tuning in from this evening. Hi, Catherine. Hello, hello, Lorna, Peppermint Petty. You said I thought you were away. I don't know if that's for me. Um, love the Santa hat says Impossible Agent. Do you know how much I spent on this shirt? And she talks about the hat. But anyways, <laughs> thank you. Okay, we have Amsterdam in the house. Goeie avond. Lekker kopje thee erbij. Ooh, too hot. And we have Iowa. Um, Liverpool Mary says, I loved you in Queen's speech. Um, right, on Saturday morning, I recorded the Queen's speech podcast with Clive and Dennis Kavanagh and Rudy and Jack. And I'd only, have, I'd only slept four hours. <laughs> oh, Delfuna, Avon House, thank you so much for your, that's Australian dollars, right? Australian five dollars and the kiss. Mwah, thank you. Um, my voice is still a bit rough because I'd spend the Friday night in a bar, which I'm going to tell uh, talk to you about, and then didn't get back till about five in the morning. And oh, and then had to wake up to record this podcast at 10. And my voice was so rough, it's still rough. And I don't often drink. I hadn't drunk that much, but, you know, <laughs> it had its effects. And then um, halfway through the Queen's speech recording, I realized I still had my mouth guard in. <laughs> Anyways, but I'm glad you enjoyed it. Who else have we got? Have we got Rex in the house? I see somebody mentioning Rex. Leslie Farrington, hello. And Kurt, good evening. Charles, heart. Oh, so nice to see you all. Thank you for joining me. Uh, and Joe Springs says, that shirt, look, I love the way it sparkles. I just love this gorgeousness. Anyway, very, very, I thought we'll, we'll go classy Christmas. Um, I also bought something a bit more trashy Christmas. <laughs> you know, when you see something online and you're like, that's gonna, that looks fantastic on this model. This is gonna... Would this look great on me? No, it won't, says my inner voice. It's going to look ridiculous. But it looks great on him. It might work for me. And you just know that it won't. And then you put it on and you're like, mm, you shouldn't have bought that. You look ridiculous. It's still too hot. Anyways. And we've got Brighton and Jonathan in the house representing Wales. I think there's some other people from Wales as well. Um, Leslie Farrington says, great news about Eddie Izzard. Yes, even Brighton doesn't want to represent it by Eddie. I think that's good news. So hurrah. Sorry. <coughs> okay. Wow. I mean, so much has happened since we last spoke. It will be impossible to go through all of it, but I just want to say how great was Cami Badenoch two weeks in a row where she said at the dispatch box in the House of Commons, what did she say? It was like Stonewall doesn't decide what the law is. Something to that effect. Um, just very plain speaking, very clear, to the point. And she didn't fall for any of them. What was it? Was Chris Bryant MP who said, "I don't feel safe. I don't feel safe." He said, and I thought he's gonna burst into that Anastasia song, "Left Outside Alone." <laughs> I don't feel safe. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, and then we had. Uh, a woman from the, the SNP just talking about compassion, all just making the usual arguments. I absolutely loved oh, how Kemi dealt with all the questions, like Martina Nafrati Lova style, going, all right then, okay, nope. And she was fantastic. And one thing that really uh, meant a lot to me is that she actually mentioned trancing away the gay. That was the sh that was the phrase that she used. So that's been said in Parliament now. 
And then it was mentioned that morning by Neil Henvey, who is a gay MP from Scotland. He said it in um, a place called the Westminster Hall, uh, which is also part of the of parliament. And the next week, Kemi was uh, answering questions for the Women and Equality Select Committee, where again, she mentioned trancing the gay away. And there was a, an MP on that committee called Kate Osborne from Labour, who is completely, as I say, gone with the woo-woo, completely gone with it. And when at one point Kemi said that teaching kids nonsense in schools like that, biological sex isn't real. And Kate Osborne goes, oh, who says that this is nonsense? <laughs> like, are you for real? You're not on Twitter now. Come on. This is real life. This is like a, 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 a select committee hearing. But she said it. And I'm so glad she did because it just makes her look stupid. I mean, oh, to come to, to go that far. <laughs> who says that it's nonsense? It's great. I'm like, okay, go full blown TRA. Show your true colors. Show everybody how nuts it is. Only makes Kemi look even more reasonable and down to earth. And the great thing about Kemi is she just ignored it. <laughs> she just she just ignored it. Um, Kate Osborne also used the, the phrase, trans away the gay. But she said it to deny that it was happening. Um, and that to me is interesting because she did name it for what it is. Um, so it's being said now on both sides and we're now at a point where if it's spilling over from twitter and from you know all the grassroots activism into different spaces in parliament i think that is a huge i think that is a turning point maybe i'm being too positive but now it's like okay it's been said it's recorded it's there for everyone to see and hear and now it, it feels like We've moved up a level. Um, they can't say that they didn't know. They can't say they weren't aware. They can't say they'd never heard of it. If even the other side now uses the phrase trancing away the gay, I think that is a sign of progress. I really want that cup of tea. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Talk amongst yourself. <laughs> Peppermint Petty says, Menno, it's been said the wheels are in motion, but such a long, long way to go. And I agree with you there. But I do think this is, it's a shift. This is not just like a little bit of progress. This is quite the shift. So um, I'm, I'm very happy about that. And by the way, I no longer speak to you as just any gay man. I am now the gay of the year. <laughs> and I absolutely love that. I absolutely love this. Um, this was an award that I was given by the organization Not All Gays. They are an Irish organization standing up for the rights of homosexuals. And um, you know, some of the people on the other side, particularly gay men, like to tell me that I've been rejected by the community, outcast, and that my gay card has been revoked. And I'm like, oh, really? Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> and it's somebody printed it off at home somewhere, and you can see, like, the lines from the inkjet printer. And I love that because that, to me, says this is proper grassroots, right? This is not shiny, glossy um captured so-called activism sponsored by the media uh or jaguar or virgin atlantic or you know some pharmaceutical company this is proper honest grassroots and um i was very moved by that actually it says um sorry gay of the year is awarded to mr menno for his wit humor and tenacity to push back against gender stereotypes for fearlessly calling out homophobic and misogynistic behaviors 
and ideologies and for bringing a bit of light to the debate. And I was very moved by that. Um, most of the stuff I do is from my room here or my living room. And to know that it has an impact on people in different places. Oh, hi, Rex. Nice to see you. Um, and Tish is in the house, I see. It means a lot. So thank you. For me, that is 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 the best Christmas gift. It's fantastic. I'm so happy. Um, in terms of it making a difference to people in real life, I was walking down the street. I was walking down the street uh, last Sunday, a week ago. Um, I'm crossing the road, and then there are a few cars parked uh, at the traffic lights. Not parked, but, you know, stood still, waiting for the light to go green. And a woman in, in one of the cars opens the door and looks at me. I look at her, and she goes, are you Mr. Mano? And I'm like, is she going to drag me into the car and kidnap me? <laughs> Who knows? And I went, yes. And she's like, keep doing what you're doing. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, and this was last Sunday. So that was just um, after we, we, we'd we seen Kami um, smashing it in, in Parliament. And, I, and, and we had the judgment from, um, um, uh, was it? Lady Haldane, who had said that yes, the UK had government had been right to trigger Section 35 to stop self ID becoming law in Scotland. So we had that judgment as well. So I just said, Look, wasn't it a fantastic week? And she went, Amazing, keep doing what you're doing. And then the, the lights changed, she closed the door, and they drove off. And I just thought, What are the chances? I mean, in a big place. Like London, what are the chances that someone, first of all, spots me and then recognizes me and then wants to say something? So that gave me a spring in my step, you know, and she had a big smile on her face. And it's just like small moments like that in real life, you know. I, by all means, ha don't have a very big presence, I would say. I mean... I don't have a hundred thousand followers uh, or a million followers, and still I'm not on TV. I'm not in the newspapers. Uh, you know, I'm not in adverts or whatever. I just do what I do. But for people just on the street to recognize me just makes me think. So many more people are listening and paying attention. Uh, Dusty said, "Shout out for Rosie Duffield." Um, <coughs> I met Rosie last Thursday, last week Thursday. Um, I've, I've met her before very briefly, just said hi. But now we, we had a bit more of a chat. And I sang a little song ID for her about her and Keir Starmer. And um, it made her laugh. So I think that means there's a seal of approval. And I might, I might do something with that. Um, anyways, blah, 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 blah. Let's talk about. Ireland. So, um, just checking what's going on in the chat. Uh, Kofefi Maga <laughs> says, I think the GC community is pretty small, honestly. I often see the same names in lives. Uh, see, I don't know. I think there's so many people that just aren't vocal um, or are just watching and are on, on sort of, more people are paying attention. That's the sense that I have. And I mean, another thing that happened a few weeks ago is I was walking towards the tube and there was a man on a bench with his daughter, who I thought would have been about five or six years old. And as I walk past, this man looks at me and goes, and I just thought, oh, okay, weird. Um, so I take a few more steps. And again, I look at him and then again, he goes, and I'm like, what, what does this mean? So I just asked, um, do we know each other? And he said, uh, you don't know me, but I know you from your videos. Keep up the good work. Um, and I thought, that's interesting, because when I have people come up to me, it's usually women. So for it to be a man, and in this case, straight men with a child, I think, um, I was like, okay, that's good. 
Um, I get on the tube. 45 minutes later, I'm in a completely different part of town. And I'm walking down the street. And then somebody taps me on the shoulder, which really took me by surprise because I was listening to some music on my, uh, you know, headphones with noise reduction. And, and I was listening to The Sound of Silence by uh, Simon and Garfunkel. And I was just trying to figure out how they did the harmonies. So I wasn't really paying attention. And then suddenly someone taps me on the shoulder and goes, Hi, are you Mr. Man? <laughs> so I was like, excuse me, stop the music. And this was a, a gay man. Um, and he thanked me for what I do. And then I thought, what are the chances, again, in a city as big as London, that one journey is bookended by two of those experiences. So again, it makes me that make that it's not about oh yeah I got recognized. It's about wow, what are the chances? Okay, it's happening. It's happening more frequently. People are paying attention. It gives me a good feeling. Um, so let's talk about this bar in Ireland. So I went to Dublin on Friday. Because not all gays, um, they're on Twitter, they're on Instagram as not all gays. And what's interesting about them is uh, it's a very new organization. I think they set up maybe six or 12 months ago, maybe. And they're all really young. They're all in their 20s, uh, which is fantastic. And it's important that they represent, you know, the younger voices in this, in this crazy fight. So I wish them all the best. And um, they, sorry, <coughs> it's the time of year. And I was just out in the cold singing Christmas carols. <laughs> I've never done that. It felt like one of the most English things you could ever do, singing Christmas carols in the cold and everybody shivering. <laughs> and at the end, we had a mince pie and a, and a bit of mulled wine. Um, what uh, what was I saying? Okay, so this organization, they're very young, uh, young people, and they organized a little alternative awards show um, because there was something called the gala or something where they give away, you know, that, that's the well-funded stuff, um, but that's completely captured by all the queer thing uh, stuff. So um, they wanted to have something alternative to that. So they called it the actual gala for actual homosexuals. Okay. Oh, somebody's giving me some money. Hmm. And the username is 877 Swiss Miss. Okay. And it's 5 CHF, which would be Swiss francs. Thank you. And you're saying, thanks, Mr. Gay Turf. <laughs> Mr. Gay Turf. This is not just any gay turf. This is the gay turf of the year. I do love it. Um, so one of them sent me a message and say, hey, you've been nominated for gay of the year, also for content creator of the year. Um, if you can make it, come along. And I thought, well, I'm in London, you're in Dublin. Uh, so no. But then um, I thought, just have a look at flights. And I found a flight that wasn't too expensive. Uh, and then I thought, just go, just to show your support. And because they're a young organization, you know, and, and give them a bit of a boost that way, hopefully. Um, and have a good time, obviously. So I got there. And uh, on the way from the airport to Dublin, I got a message from someone that I'd never met before. Um, a lesbian who'd been given my number by a detransitioner from Holland that I know. So, and she's just like, hey, I'm stuffing my face uh, in a restaurant. Come and join me if you want. And I just thought, how wonderful is this? So I just get off the bus. I find, <laughs> I, I put some stickers on the lamppost on one of those main shopping streets, O'Connell Street or something. Um, so there's some adult human female and adult human male stickers now. <laughs> on the way to the restaurant then I meet this wonderful wonderful lesbian and I so wished she lived in London um we just got on really well and we had a lovely meal 
And then from there, we went to the venue where the awards, the not not all gay awards were being held. Kurt Rowlett, thank you so much for your 15 American dollars. And you're saying, we knew you were king of the gays, award or not, award or not. Thank you very much. That's, that's much appreciated. Uh, and Susie Glucksman says, we need a Rex and Menno duet. I'm not sure if the world is ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be quite something. Um, Rex did contribute to one of the Christmas things I did. Was it last year or the year? Last year, wasn't it? The 12 days of Christmas. I think it was last year. It feels like a year. One year now feels like three years, you know, um, with all this stuff. But anyway, so lesbian woman and I, we, um, I don't want to say her name just in case she doesn't want to be, you know, want me to use it. We we then went to um, that venue for the, the Not All Gays award ceremony. And that was great. Um, and then uh, I was also up for content creator of the year, but that went to Redux, uh, which well-deserved, well-deserved. They do so much work. So then it's like, okay, where shall we go next? And then we went to a gay bar, a gay bar, or what used to be a gay bar. It's a place called Street 66. Um, it's quite a, a, a big space. And it's like, there's a front and there's a back. Uh, and a middle, actually. It's got like three parts to it. So at the front, there's the bar with stool and some tables. And then you've got this space in the middle where they've got sofas, Actually, it's a really nice space. I really like that bar. Um, tables and chairs, sofas and, and coffee tables. It, it felt quite relaxed and friendly, friendly music. And then at the back, that's where the dance floor is and another bar, quite a big bar. And there's a DJ, drag queen, obviously. Um, so we just went there um, to have drinks and we're sitting there, we're chatting away. And I'm looking around. And they had quite a few signs that they'd made. So I'll just have a look. I took some pictures of them. Da -dum, da -dum. Okay. So at the back, they had the trans flag in the window and the progress flag. So that makes me go, ugh, and some of the others too. And then they had a sign that says, that said, trans healthcare. No! And the, these are really shitty signs. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, you can. Ish, right? It's just like a, ooh, oh, this is really weird when you do that. Ah, your reflection. Trans healthcare now. It's just someone painting the words on a white board or something. It's pretty crappy. Anyway, trans healthcare now. And then another one that said, um, <laughs> Street 66, which is the sorry the name of the place, and then inclusive space. Notify staff on any issues, and we will be there. The Street 66 team, okay. And again, it's got trans colors at the top, um, and then they've got another picture of whoa, uh, the bar itself with the trans colors there, the rainbow colors, and then. I don't know what the other colors. I think that just represents different skin tones or something, like black and brown people. Um, so it's pretty clear what sort of bar you're in. Uh, that guy says, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, that guy. Do you have to be that guy? Yes, he's that guy. Um, Peppermint Patty asks, what has trans got to do with a gay bar? Well, it's no longer a gay bar. It's a queer space now. So everything's different. So I go up to the bar um, at the back. And there is a sign that said, fuck JK Rowling. Just like that. And I'm not making it up. This is true. Apparently, it's been there for a while. Um, but I don't know if you can, I mean, it's a bit ridiculous showing it like that, but fuck you, JK Rowling. And there you can see it's got like, uh, the trans blue, pink and white. Fuck JK Rowling proudly displayed at the bar. 
And I just thought, wow, to be that blatant about it, that is quite something. Fuck J.K. Rowling. Like, what has she ever said that is actually transphobic? You know, there'll be TRAs on Twitter who have tens of thousands of so-called examples, <coughs> which are all bollocks. Manvis is saying, Menno, you look cool. Thank you very much. Um, and good evening to you too. If that if that is the way that they want to, you know, how do you say that? Make their point about all of this. If if that is, ugh, it's just so stupid and immature. And I thought, well, what about the staff? What about if some of the staff there actually agree with J.K. Rowling? Um, and this is not just saying fuck J.K. Rowling. This is saying fuck any so-called gender critical person. This is saying fuck any lesbian that says lesbians don't have penises. And fuck any gay man who says gay men don't have vaginas. This is saying fuck anyone who says no males in female spa spaces, no males in female sports, no males in female prisons. You can all just go and fuck off. Fuck you to you. That's what that Stein says. It's absolutely, I think, outrageous that a so-called inclusive space would put a sign out like that. Of course, they can, and it's all freedom of speech. Uh, but anyway, I went up to the bar, and the barman looks at me and goes, what can I get you? This guy, he was quite tall, at least six foot, I think, quite buff in a beefy kind of way with a, a tank top. And um, I said, you don't need to get me something. I wonder if you could take something away from me. And he's like, eh? And I'm like, that sign. He's like, what? I said, the sign. That sign says, fuck J.K. Rowling. This, by the way, all happens while there's loud music pumping. So that's another reason why I kind of lost my voice because I really had to shout over the music. I'm like, that says, fuck you, J.K. Rowling. Or fuck J.K. Rowling. And he goes, well, yeah, she's a turf. And it's the way he said turf with that real ugh, disgust in his face and in his voice. And then I thought, wow, I mean, obviously I've been in this, what, three and a half years? And I thought, how can you still be so naive to think that that is it or that that's the answer or that that's somehow a, a reasonable claim or thing to say? So he goes, she's a turd. And I'm like, that's what I love about her. And he looked at me a bit surprised. And I just said, that's. Re a really misogynistic sign that you've got there. I mean, that's that's women hatred. That's hatred against women. She's not, you know, all she does is, is speak out for women's rights. And the gays, I said, and the gays. She's speaking up for the gays. <laughs> and he's just like, I'm not debating this with you. I'm not debating this. And I'm like, well, you may not. I said, that's so, what did I say? I said something like, that's so 2019, man. Come on, get with the times. <laughs> you may not debate it. But I am debating it, and others are debating it. Plenty of people here might be debating it. So you can say, I'm not debating it, but we are. Um, and then there was a woman behind the bar. She was very short, very, and, and she just went, we can't remove it. We, I couldn't hear her, right, because, <laughs> because the music was so loud. And she hasn't got that testosterone in the voice to give it more, <laughs> more weight. So I was like, what, what, what? And she's like, we can't remove it. And I'm like, well, of course you can. You just take it down, duh. But obviously they wouldn't do it. Then Barman is, is serving other people at this point. And he's just like, I'm not debating it again. And I'm, I'm just like, well, we are. Um, and then, oh, Linda Law is asking, was the poster a RSJ? What is an RSJ? I don't know what that is. It was just a shitty sign on some wood. Um, then out of nowhere, like this woman appeared um, with curly black hair, long black hair. 
she looked like she could be I mean, Brazilian or Latina or Spanish or something. And um, and she said, wow, you're really passionate about this, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, but your heart is racing. She put, my, she put her hand on my chest. She's like, your heart is racing. You know, you need to calm down. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, do it with me. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. <laughs> and then she said, I agree with you. They're all bastards. And I thought, you see, how many, how many people here? Staff and people coming in for a drink or to dance. Think that way and do not appreciate that sign at all. Because that sign says you're only welcome in this space if you think the right thoughts. You're only welcome in this space if you don't acknowledge the reality of sex and if you don't acknowledge the reality of homosexuality in a gay bar or what used to be a gay bar. It is insane. It's all about membership. It's not inclusive. It's all about being part of the right club and saying the right things and thinking the right things. And even if you don't think the right things, then you, that you hide it. It's about being completely, it's about, it's about gays being in the closet. And that's why I, I thought, I'm not having this. I'm not having this. And I did, I just kept going back at him. And he's like, oh, I'm not debating it. Like, you need to know that not everyone agrees with you or with that sign. And I want you to know from me, da -da, as this type of gay man, we're not down with this. We're not having it. That sign is hateful. That is misogynistic. Blah, blah, blah. Lesbians don't have penises. <laughs> you can't have a conversation about this without pointing that out. Anyways, um, so then I went back to, you know, the, the group that I was with. And we continued to have a, a nice evening. And I was a bit tempted to just go around and just randomly like do a poll and ask people jk rowling you know like uh shiro or villain what do you think you know good bad what do you think just to see just to put people on the spot and see what they what they think um anyways it was about four four in the morning i think when the place closed um so everybody sort of filed out the entrance on the one side, it's quite a narrow entrance. And I was stood right at the entrance outside as people were coming out. Everybody just sort of stood there in a clump, you know. People were just smoking and vaping and just standing there. So we're all sort of huddled together. And, and then one guy comes out and he walks right past me. Well, he looks at me like he's really close to me. He's like, he's like there. And he just, he, was, he had a few drinks. <laughs> and he goes, mm -hmm. Are you? And I just went, yes. And he goes, legend. <laughs> so again, it just makes me wonder, you know, how many people know they just might not say something. Um, and with these signs, they might just, you know, kind of ignore them. But, um, I think it's very naive for that bar to assume that just because they put that sign up, that that's what everybody agrees with or thinks in that place. And like that girl who said, they're all bastards. How many people look at that sign and think, really? Really, Queen? You had to go there. Because it's so... It's because it's so pointed and so personal and so blatantly stupid and narrow-minded. That's the bigotry. That, that's the bigotry. That sign shows the bigotry. Now, apparently that bar is run by a lesbian woman. So um, she might be all in with this woo-woo business. But um, I might write to her and, and say something. And I think the more of us do the more that they then know this is not okay. 
and VF555 says a sellout. Yeah, absolutely. How can you, how can you have a space, a so-called inclusive space, where you're putting signs up that make lesbians know you're not welcome welcome here unless you accept that lesbians have or do dick. What kind of a inclusive, gay-friendly space is that when there are already so few, particularly lesbian spaces? Um, and for what? For what? So you look progressive? They don't. They look the opposite of progressive. They look bigoted. Um, I'm just going to have a bite of a little almondy cakey thing. Or a comment just made me laugh. Green Am says, very rude talking with something in my mouth. I challenge the lesbian to suck off some troon. Otherwise, I don't believe her commitment to her words. Mm. Clean City Bird says, who was there in Dublin? They also have fuck Posey Parker scrolled in the ladies' toilets. And this is, we all know that this is not isolated. We've all seen the man wearing t-shirts saying, kill the turf. We had a man saying at Pride this year, at Trans Pride, punch a turf when you see them. This is all part of that aggression that we keep seeing around the world. And they're part of that. So, okay. I'll find, I'll find out who runs that pub and I'll write to them. It might not do any good, but they need to start seeing that people are not just going, oh, that makes me feel awkward, or oh, I don't really think that's okay, but never mind, I won't say anything. They need to know actually, uh, no, we're not having that. Grow, grow up and grow a pair and don't be so bloody authoritarian about it. So... um is there anything else I need to say about that? Lavender Rose Loves Women uh, says, you know the individual who wrote Fuck Posey Parker in The Ladies Has a Penis. Well, that doesn't surprise me whatsoever. Um, somebody said, yeah, well, people are still going there and spending their money. I think, well, there, there is not that 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 many places to go, I guess. And it did. it, it is a nice space. It's a good space. The way they, you know, you've got the front bar, the middle bit, then the back bar. Um, oh, and there was one moment because I thought, oh, I'm going to go back into that dance area, you know, where that bar with the sign is. And I just thought, I just want to see if, if I can do, if I can turf a little bit more <laughs> in there. And then um, it was towards the end of the night and Drag Queen is in the DJ bo booth and they just finished playing a song. And the song was all sort of really nice sort of pop music. It wasn't aggressive. Uh, music. It was kind of nice and dancey and poppy. And then the music, the music stopped. And that was meant to be, I think, the last song of the night. And then I thought, oh, if there's a quiet moment, if it just goes quiet enough for long enough, I'll shout, lesbians don't have penises, as loud as I can, and just sort of see what the reaction is. Would people, would they go en masse? Whoa, boo, Nazi fascist scum, blah, blah, blah. Or would they just go, oh, what's he doing? What's he talking about? Or would some people agree? Who knows? Um, so I was, wait I was just waiting for that music to stop. And then it stopped. And then the whole crowd went, one more song, one more song, one more song. And I'm like, guys, come on, you're spoiling it. This could have been, the, you know, the moment where we stand up for homosexuals. But um, then they started playing another song. That moment passed by and I couldn't, couldn't use it the way I wanted to. <laughs> Anyways, and then, um, <coughs> and 
And then that was it. So then obviously we stayed there for a while. Then we left. Then that guy recognized me at the end. And it, it just gave me a good feeling. It gave me a whole, the whole, it was a great night, by the way, because the people I was with were really nice people. And we had real good conversation, not just about that stuff. Oh, I forgot. There was a guy that was also came into that, that back bar area with me. And, um, you know, I was doing my thing going, this is misogynistic, you know, this sign, uh, I love turfs, blah, blah, blah. And then um, he sort of joined in. And and he's he's quite he's quite camp and um and he just went oh actually I love that sign I love it can you get me one <laughs> and then the barman with a really serious face like I think he took it serious he just went actually it's homemade <laughs> and it was such a shit sign um so. Um, that was that story. So what I will do is I will find a way to get in touch with the owner of the bar and I will write to them and then I'll let you know who you can write to as well. And, um, does she really want her bar to be known to be a bar for bigots, basically, uh, a bar that, um, I mean, it's it's not just like they have a little. It's it's a big it's a big statement to actually have that on a sign. Fuck J.K. Rowling in a bar at the bar for everyone to see. That's the point. Is she really okay with it? Does she want? Is that the kind of bar that she wants to have there? That she wants to run there? Some author authoritarian, exclusive. Be a bigot or else you're not welcome. Bar does this. Can this bar make a statement that they still know what a homosexual is? Do they still know what a lesbian is? Do they still know what a gay man is? You know. Um, so I'll do something with that and then I'll let you know. And if you yourself could go up. Go to that bar if you live in Dublin and say, mm, I'm not down with that. I mean, everyone can have their opinion, but why? if you have that sign, fuck J.K. Rowling, can't you also have a sign that says, I love J.K. Rowling, just to show that at least you recognize, you know, that there's two different positions to take here. Have them side by side. Of course they won't do that. Um, speak to them. Say something. Um, I don't know what the law is like in Ireland. Obviously, here we have the Equality Act and gender critical beliefs are now protected, um, depending, of course, on how you express them. So I don't know what the equivalent of that is in Ireland. So if there's anybody, I saw King City Bird in, in the chat. So if you've got any thoughts on that, let us know. And um, But, but have, start conversations with people if you can. Um, just, just a little gentle hey, uh, do you know what's, what's up? Why, why is everyone so angry with J.K. Rowling? Do you know what that's about? And sort of, you know, try to tease it out of people. And I think you'd be surprised how many people go, it's all going to be a bonkers, hasn't it? So there we go. That was my story for this evening. Let me catch up with the chat. Lavender Rose loves women, says talk to strangers. Ireland is like Trenda's little brother, says Hannah Reynolds. Um, useless strawberry. <laughs> That's such a funny name. Are you saying, Menno, sex is not just hairstyles, clothes, and empty statements? I know! Outrageous! And I said it to Twitter earlier today. The only way to break stereotypes, those regressive, reductive stereotypes around masculinity and femininity is to embrace your sex and give gender the middle finger not by reinforcing gender that's how you do it so on that note i shall love you and leave you um we're getting close to christmas i'm gonna go to the netherlands to see my family um i hope you all have a wonderful time yourself before i go I'm hoping to have a chat with 
for women Scotland uh, with uh, two members of their team just to talk us through everything that's happened. It's been a big week for Scotland because we had the whole thing judgment saying, yes, the UK government was right to trigger, to stop self-ID basically in Scotland. But there was something else that was, ah, the new prison guidance came out and that's just bonkers. So, and there were some other things. So I just wanted to have a sit down with two women from, from For Women Scotland, have a chat, and then I'll post that um, before I go. I'm traveling on Thursday, so I really want to get that out before then. Sarah Lockett, thank you so much for your £10. Much appreciated. Thank you. And then underneath your donation, it says, let's celebrate their first super on a live stream. Hurrah, Sarah. Hurrah. Everybody joining. And I'm also planning a little Christmas message. And it's it's going to be quite short and simple. Um, I really hope I can pull off what I have in mind. Uh, as I said, it's, it's short and simple, but it's going to take a little bit of time and um, organizing a few different things. So I'll do I'll do my best, and then um, well I might do a live stream. I don't know on the thirtieth. We'll see. Anyways, plenty of stuff to do for the new year. Anyway, in the new year. I've got a list of about 25 videos I need to make. So I won't even be able to do that in the next year. But um, thank you so much for joining me this evening. And I'm wishing you all a good evening, a very good week next week. And I shall see you. Oh, sorry. I just saw in the chat somebody called E says, recently D-Trans. And I love your channel. So in that case, Oh, I hope you're well. Um, I have no idea, obviously, what your journey involves in terms of the medical medical side, but I hope you're I hope you're okay. I hope you're supported. Um, and Paul says, "Song, please, song." Ah, and that's Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Um, oh, what do we do in terms of a song? Do you want a Christmas song? <laughs> What were we singing earlier, like at the carol place? I wasn't planning to go to, Chris, to, to do Christmas carols, but I was in a pub um, with Graham Linden, uh, and he's like, oh, I'm going to meet someone at this carol singing stuff. Do you want to come? Okay. So we were standing there going, um, oh, what, what's that song? Oh, come, all ye faithful. But I don't know. I, I know the words in Dutch. <laughs> but it's, I don't know. What else? Give me a song, because I don't know now. A Rosie Duffield song. Okay, it's very short. It's just the initial idea. And obviously, I'm, I'm, I, I will do the Blue Velvet song. I will do the Blue Velvet song. And Shannon says, daughter is well and turned 19. Okay, meaning you've guided her through puberty, Shannon, without her going down the path she wanted to go down. So everybody give it up for Shannon um, for helping her daughter navigate puberty without going down the gender wolf whole um rosie duffield okay so this is to the tune of if i only had a brain from the wizard of oz um so this is keir starmer singing about rosie duffield i would go out and support her and tell her i adored her if she only had a dick but she hasn't got the testy so alas we can't be besties and she hasn't got a dick. Um, it made Rosie Duffield laugh. It made her laugh. Um, so I thought that was a good sign. And then somebody else says, can you sing a Christmas song in Dutch? Oh, Denebo. I don't even remember the words to that. Oh, Denebo. Oh, Denebo. Wat zijn jouw taken wonderschoon? And what is it in English? Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. I don't know. I know it in Greek. Useful. Oh, elato. Oh, elato. Maresis pos maresis. So, on that note, I think I better go now. So, have a good evening. And I'll see you again soon. How lovely are your branches? Okay. Duh. I'll remember that for next year. So, good night. Uh, Gute Nacht, 
Goeie avond. Bonsoir. Kalispera. Uh, buenas noches. And see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao. Woo. I can do that because I'm the actual, actual gay of the year. Ha, <laughs>